Welcome, and thank you for joining us again tonight. Thank you for joining us again tonight as we unveil another incredible collection live from our Cincinnati Warehouse showroom. I am Palmer, the Marketing and Creative Director here at Everything But The House, and your host for the night. Our favorite members of the merchandising team, Jen, Kara, and Meredith, will be here helping us today as we share some unique collectibles and antiques from the Bartok family in New Jersey. Ruth Bartok and her husband Andrew took their son Brian on many trips to Smithsville just outside of Atlantic City where they hunted for antiques and collectibles for their cozy home. On these trips, Brian picked up the family tradition and started a series of collections of his own, mostly sports memorabilia and now vintage toys. Let's jump right in and talk about some of the most followed uh, items in the sale. Jen, come on out and uh, I think we're going to talk about a couple of pieces of decor that are at the top. Hey Palmer. Hush. Hey, yeah, we do. We want to talk about uh, this great Fabergé egg. It's one of our most followed items. It's a limited edition egg, and um, as you can see, it's in this gorgeous green et etched crystal uh, with the gold detailing. Uh, the egg is signed at the uh, kind of at the base right down here, and it's also numbered 985. Yeah. Uh, it retains its original box. And it features, of course, this double-headed eagle on the front, which you know is kind of a symbol for Russian imperialism. Yep. It has the crown above, the orb, and the, and the uh, scepter. And then if we turn it just a little bit, we can see all this beautiful uh, detailed lattice work on, on the back of the egg with kind of this starburst uh, on the top, and it's on this beautiful base as well. Yeah, so this is a replica because all the originals are in museums and such. That is correct. It, this piece is based on the original egg, which is, of course, housed in the Gatchina Palace in St. Petersburg, Russia, and I sure hope I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> well, I've actually been able to visit. I still can't pronounce it, so, uh, but anyway, it was a business trip, and it was a fun, uh, fun place to see. Well, very cool. A, a few fun facts about the palace that you may or may not recall. Uh, probably not. Um, it's a sprawling palace comprising 9,721 acres, so just a cozy little place. <laughs> it was built in 1781 for Count Orloff as a gift from Catherine the Great. Okay. Uh, the Count was one of the favorites of Catherine, um, mainly due to the fact that he was the one that led the coup that overthrew her husband, Peter III, which then installed her so she's as, in power. The, as the Empress of the Russian Empire. Well, that's a cool uh, bit of hit Russian history that I yeah. probably didn't remember from the, uh, the tour, but I did have a blast uh, soaking in St. Petersburg. Um, while we're Very talking cool. about eagles... There's oh, that's one right. right up behind we us. Have Let's a, talk about this. Yes, well, this, this is um, actually an American bald eagle, uh, really beautifully, uh, skillfully carved, uh, lots of detail. Uh, you can see that there's a really fierce expression on the eagle's face. His head is cocked to the side. Um, you know, look at how the symmetry in the, in the wings and all the detailing in the feather. And then they always refer to these as sinister talons. And in his sinister talons, he's grasping uh, these uh, seven arrows and branches on, on one side. And so I think there's also, there's some holes in the back that signify that it was probably like mounted yeah. or? It was probably part, it's an architectural piece. So it was probably part of a doorway or a, you know, a, a fireplace or, or, or a large piece of furniture in a grand stately home. Very cool, very cool. Well, thank you, Jen. We'll see you again out here later, I think. Thanks, Palmer. Um, all right, so uh, Ruth Bartok had a uh, quite an extensive collection of uh, the popular porcelain figurines from Yadro. Uh, Kara's going to come on and tell us a little bit about this collection and some of these uh, particular pieces back here. Sure, I'd love to. Um, so there's quite a selection of Yadros in, in this estate, uh, ranging from female figures to angels and some holiday decor right. as well. Holidays are coming up. Yeah. <laughs> if you're interested in Yadros, their themes are typically based on life moments and the charming positive sides of life. Um, they include love and relationships and primarily focus on human interactions and, and genre scenes. Um, there are also series that focus on animals and floral themes. So what pieces are we highlighting here and uh, why are they important? Sure. Um, so this one we wanted to highlight. It's called Thinking of Love and it's from the Privilege Collection. Um, and so is this one. This is called Puppy Parade. I know this is one of your personal favorites. Um, and the Privilege Collection started in the first decade of the 21st century, and it's one of the more popular collections. Thinking of Love was designed in 2001 and retired in 2005. And this particular one is signed with the sculptor and uh, painter's names to the underside. So I assume the Privilege Collection is probably a little bit more exclusive, as well as the fact that mm -hmm. uh, this one 
is retired. Is retired. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So it makes it more desirable. Um, but I wanted to highlight this one in particular because of the detail here. It's really impressive. It's important to note that each yadro piece is handcrafted, which is particularly evident in the intricate details of, of the flowers throughout this one. Um, each petal is individually made, making it very unique and extremely delicate, as you can see. Um, the, the intricacy here is pretty incredible. So Very cool. And let's take note, everybody, uh, that these all come in the original boxes, right. which obviously makes them uh, even more collectible. Yeah, and um, also, if you want to grab that yeah, one, Palmer, sure. um, if you look at the underside of this one, just want to point this out, you can see it's marked with the blue flower mark, which is seen on more modern pieces because it came into being around 1970. Um, the flower mark signifies something particular. It's a stylized combination of the Spanish campanillo, or the bell flower, and an ancient alchemic symbol. And that symbolizes uh, the marriage of art and science because the Yadro Company really believed that that's what their craft embodied. So. Very, very detailed pieces. Uh, mm -hmm. So why don't we bring out the uh, other half of Keredith. Yes. I know you guys wouldn't let me live that down. <laughs> uh, so Meredith, uh, why don't you come on out and uh, join her? I know you guys have some fun pieces to share and I will get this set aside. Yes, let's share a couple of our most favorite items in this collection. <laughs> My personal favorite is this Japanese musical cigarette dispenser. Are you going to bring it sure over that here? it's wound up? So please. This is really fun. It's actually leading the collectibles category in what's most followed right now, and it's so fun. I'll let's show you. Let's play it. Okay, here it goes. So this little <laughs> dog jumps up. <laughs> oh my gosh. Just to hand you a cigarette. <laughs> Gotta snatch it, he's going back down already. <laughs> <laughs> and the music box is playing a song called Smoke Gets In Your Eyes. The song was released by a band called um, The Platters around 1960. Awesome. Please note the cigarette is not included. <laughs> Kara has also, she has a fun toy oh, to yeah. share as well. So what did you want to show us? I wanted to show you my personal favorite, which is this Limberjack. What is a Limberjack? <laughs> so a Limberjack is also called a jig doll, and it's a dancing toy. And you can see it's very loose-limbed, and they're traditionally made of carved wood or tin plates. They're likely, they, uh, they likely originated back in the 16th century in Europe with street performers. Um, but it was brought into the United States by early settlers and since then has become part of the Americana kind of flavor. You can see it has joints at its knees and it's loosely nailed together so its limbs can move a lot. And on the back you'll have a metal stick and traditionally you would have had a, a, someone playing a fiddle next to you and you would be seated and then under, underneath your leg you would have like a floppy board and you would put the, the feet on the board and then hit the board with your hand and it would, it would do a little jig imitating a clog dancer. So. <laughs> Love it. Well, I don't have a fiddle and I know you don't have a floppy board, yeah. but let's see him dance. Absolutely, I would gladly I would start out slow. <laughs> You can get pretty crazy there. I'm not as skilled at it. All right, could you guys play the video that shows Kirk Fiddle playing this much better than Kara can? Yeah, put me to shame. <laughs> Uh, folksy pieces. Uh, there, I do have, there's a couple questions about Yadro that we'll probably jump back to in a minute. There's a piece that I sure. don't think we have out that we may pull out later. Mm -hmm. uh, and we did just want to mention that uh, the puppy has the, uh, the highest bid uh, in that section. Mm -hmm. um, so while we're uh, up here talking about some pieces, let's talk about the, uh, the sewing machine. It's also a very popular piece uh, of Americana and Jen has some uh, detail about that. Yeah, actually the, the story about Singer is really interesting. Um, so uh, this, uh, this Singer sewing machine is in its original oak case, and as you can see, it's really retained a lot of its kind of gilt detailing all around on the, the body of the machine, and all of this, you know, metal work on the front is pretty, uh, it, it's pretty great. So tell us a little bit about the history of Singer and... and you know. Well, I, I, actually, Isaac Merritt Singer was a German immigrant, and he was reportedly quite a handsome and charismatic gentleman. He was working as a traveling Shakespearean actor, but, you know, in between gigs, he had to make ends meet. So he was working in machine shops where he learned his trade and began tinkering with sewing machines. Okay. 
um, he realized that they didn't work very well. <laughs> so he figured that he could make some improvements. Uh, but he didn't take the sewing machine industry very seriously. So how does he go from actor and then fiddling with these to revolutionizing the sewing industry? Actually, he goes on to purchase a patent uh, and that improves the operation of the machine and actually um, then the machine is able to outperform uh, most of the skilled uh, seamstresses at the time. Ah. So um, anyway, now, uh, but he's facing another issue because the cost of the machine uh, was $125, which you know doesn't sound like a lot to us now, but at that time, uh, it's equivalent to over $3,000 today. That's like a hefty price tag for yeah. a new piece of uh, technology. Yes, yes, but that doesn't deter Singer. Okay. So again, he puts his charm to good use and he goes around and parades through the streets of New York in a bright yellow horse-drawn carriage with six to nine horses and in the back he has a band playing and he has pretty girls working on the sewing machines to uh, just to show that you know these delicate ladies could indeed operate the machine. And so since Singer is kind of like a household name we know he made it so the device took off. Yes so as the story goes on and on and on and on and on um, they face lawsuits and absolutely furious litigations and uh, mergers and, and shutdowns um, but in the end the company found its footing and of course it's now part of uh, American Tapestry. And this one has some uh, uh, some model numbers on it right? Yes um, actually at the foot of this one the latest patent date is July 14th 1910. Awesome very cool. So. Yeah. Always good to hear a story of uh, ingenuity and persistence. Yes. Thank you, Jen. Appreciate You're welcome. it. Uh, remember, guys, to chat in any questions and comments you have along the way. We definitely want to hear from you. Uh, let's go ahead and bring out EBTH sports and collectibles enthusiast Darla Bernhardt to tell us about some of Brian's collectibles as a kid. Hi, Darla. Hi, Palmer. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do at EBTH and how long you've been here to get, uh, get started. I started at EBTH in July of 2012, and um, I've been collecting sports memorabilia uh, dating from the 1800s to the 1960s, primarily early Reds, New York Yankees, and those kind of teams. So a lot of baseball and a lot, a lot of, of baseball. Nice, yes. very cool. So I think the piece you wanted to start with was, uh, it's one of the most followed collectibles in the sale. Yes. And why don't you tell us a little bit about what we have here. This is a Danbury Mint uh, model, signed by legendary uh, pilot Chuck Yeager, who broke the sound barrier in 1947. So, I mean, this guy was an incredible story, yes, right? Like, he, just test he, pilot. And he was a test pilot. Uh, NASA uh, used his tests uh, when he flew over 45,000 miles uh, for future uh, NASA uh, trips um, as tests. And um, Dan Berryman is, is a high-quality company that normally is known for their sports, uh, baseball teams and football players. This is the first... Uh, Chuck Yeager piece that I've had in the nine years I've been here. Very cool. So a really cool story and a, and a very unique piece. Uh, I noticed there are also a, uh, some die cast cars, a lot of them in the sale, and then we have a few up here. So what, uh, why, are, why are these ones special? These were uh, made by Auto Art and uh, Motorsport, and they're uh, 118 uh, scale models, and they're the, the most popular scale model um, in this kind of collection. These cars are detailed, the doors, they have movable parts, and they come in, in their uh, original boxes. So that original box is important for yes, sure, right? Yes, very important. Talked about that during the yachters. Yes. And I think these pieces uh, are currently at the highest in the, uh, of the die-cast car set. These are at 231, yes. which is, you, you have a lot to do with yes, the scale. Yes, McLaren, yes, yeah. and it does have a lot to do with the scale. Very cool. How many bids are on there? What's that say? 12 or 13 bids, very cool. All right, well thank you, Darla. Don't go too far, because okay. I'm gonna bring you back out right. uh, in a little bit and pick your brain about a few more things. Uh, Meredith's gonna come on and she's gonna share some about some vintage toys um, from, the, from uh, Barbie. I wanted to tell you about the vintage era Barbie and Midge dolls from the 1950s and 60s that were from this collection. What's cool is that Barbie spans three eras of dolls. So the vintage era was the first one from 1959 to 1972. The modern era came after, which was after 72. And then the collectible era, era most recently, which started um, by Mattel in 1986. This one in particular cool. here right. is called the Fashion Queen doll. She's yeah, my personal favorite. <laughs> I think you told me earlier she was made in 1963. That's right. So these Barbies featured molded painted hair, which is under her turban, um, and they came with interchangeable wigs, which are shown here on the shelf. 
pick one up for you. Um, they included a red flip style, a brunette page boy, and a blonde bubble. So this is the blonde bubble here. The Barbie wore a uh, white and gold strapless swimsuit with matching turbans. And what's awesome is that in 2010, Mattel issued a Fashion Queen reproduction as part of the My Favorite Barbie series. Very cool. So she's coming back around. That's right. And we have another vintage Barbie up here too, correct? And another Barbie from the vintage era is here. And this one is an example of the bubble cut dolls, which were produced between 1961 and 1967. All right. These dolls are cool because they had a new look which was inspired by Jackie Kennedy, which was one of the most prolific style icons of the 1960s. Bubble cut dolls are characteristic, characterized by a short hairstyle referred to as a bubble cut, which you can see here, and it progressively became fuller over the years. So is there like a particular era that is more or less important to uh, collectors? The vintage era is the most important. Um, Barbies from the vintage era are especially prized among collectors. And often these Barbies had bendable legs or red hair, and they are considered some of the most rare and valuable. Today, a price of a mint condition Barbie from this era can run close to $25,000. And it looks like we have a couple of Midge dolls up here as well, That's right? That's right. The two Midge dolls are featured in the middle here. And Midge is awesome because Midge dolls were introduced in, the, in 1962 as Barbie's best friend. And Midge was created to counteract the criticism that Barbie was too mature for young kids. Mm -hmm. You can see that they're... Uh, makeup, their lipstick is a little bit of a lighter tone, and this one even has freckles, which is super cute. Nice. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Meredith. Uh, Darla, are you ready to talk some sure. sports? Yeah. Um, there's some pretty cool autographs in, the, in this collection here, right? Let's talk about this Vince Carter basketball. Oh, yeah. yeah we have a Spalding signature style Spalding basketball signed by Vince Carter. And uh, what's the interesting about this ball is the fact that it's got the white panel, right? Yeah, the white yeah. panel makes it easier for athletes to sign, and it's got uh, the NBA um, endorsement, so it's not like one of your knockoffs. And then Vince Carter is a, uh, very I mean, was slam a very dunk yes, champ, very prolific. been around a lot of years. Mm -hmm. how, um, how, like what teams was he playing for? The Toronto Raptors, the Nets. And then this was probably a Nets era Nets because era. of uh, where these guys were from. Right. Uh, and then we have another uh, longtime New Jersey net and a Naismith Hall of Famer. We have a jersey from them, right? Yes, we have. Well, we have the um, we have a Vince Actually, Carter. We have a Vince signed, Carter signed, signed jersey, jersey as well, and nice. we have a Jason Kidd signed jersey. Tell us a little about Jason Kidd. Uh, Jason Kidd is um, he played with the Nets from 2001 to 2008. In the first two years he played with them, he took them to the NBA Finals. Um, he, they retired his number as well, the Nets did. Nice, and he's a Hall of Famer, and I think he yes. ultimately got a championship later and towards the end of his career in Dallas. Yes, and the nice thing about the kid is this particular jersey comes with a letter from the team. Oh, cool. So certificate of authenticity it, here yes. uh, for that jersey, and it yes. comes with that. That's yes. very cool. Awesome. All right, let's grab that, put that down. Uh, and then I think we wanted to, uh, Meredith's going to hand this to us. Okay. And we hang this up here, uh, and Meredith's going to tell us, or you're going to tell us a little bit about this photo that you want to talk about. This is about. A, uh, David Tyree made probably the most famous catch in Super Bowl history uh, when the New York Giants defeated the New England Patriots. He literally, it was a last minute throw by Eli uh, Manning, and he caught the ball on the top of his helmet while he was falling backwards. How he held on to that ball, I'll never know. <laughs> but that's what great athletes do. They come through in the clutch. That's right. And so that's this what is... he this is a great photo. I mean, you couldn't it couldn't be more crisp. It captures that moment. It captures that moment. Taking down uh, Tom Brady and the team, which yes. is very hard to do, yes. as we all know. All right. And so let me hand this back to you guys over here. Yep. And then uh, I think there's a lot of baseball cards and football cards in here. And I know Brian was big into baseball. Uh, and there's one specific card. Here, I'll grab that for you. And you okay. want to grab the card. There's one specific card that you wanted to talk about. Yes, we have a, a Babe Ruth PM, yeah, PM card. Serial. This card has, is all serial numbers. It's a very limited edition. They only printed about 1,000 of these cards. Each card has a serial number printed on the back. This one is serial number 0980, and it's uh, guaranteed from the card company. It has one gram of gold intertwined in the printing of this card. 
Right, so it's a modern era Babe Ruth card, Babe Ruth, but right. it's very kind of exclusive. You can't edition. go wrong with Babe Ruth. I mean, <laughs> exactly. it's Babe Ruth is Babe Ruth. That's right. And the and card is in excellent condition. The corners look good. It's pretty well centered. You could probably take this to a company and have it graded. Very, very cool. All right. Well, thank you very much, and thanks for joining thank us. Thank you tonight. so much for asking me. Appreciate you coming out. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, I think there were a few uh, little questions that came in. Uh, online that we're going to talk about. Uh, we had a Yadro piece that they wanted to focus on. Carrie, do you have any? Uh, you want to well, bring it up? You box, can just actually, leave it in the box. Because yeah. I want to show everybody how these things do come in their original boxes. Right. So it does have, as you said, the original box are very right. nicely packed. <laughs> very delicately want to take it. Let's just do it as yeah, this so I don't do break it. it on air. This one, <laughs> I believe, has uh, the most bids or um, uh, it's one of the more popular ones. And we need to lean it up Oops, more. Sorry. Thank you guys. Can you guys sorry see it that. okay? Yeah, so it's at $118. It's got 35 bids, so it is one of the more mm -hmm. followed pieces. Uh, and it, it's, it's called a, a Barrel of Blossoms, and it's designed by uh, Francisco uh, Catala. This one, uh, they started this uh, particular one in uh, the 1980s, and it is also retired. It retired in 2005. Okay, cool. So, again, so. we know retired uh, is a big deal mm -hmm. as far as meaning they're more exclusive. Sure. All right, very cool. Thank you very much. You want to grab that? Yep. Uh, I think there was one other question uh, in regards to the arrows on the eagle, and I, th I think we were going to talk about that a little bit more. Jen, you mentioned these seven arrows. What are they all about? Well, um, actually, Palmer, we don't, we don't know. I've, <laughs> I've counted those arrows several times. There are only seven arrows there, and they're clutched in the left talon of the eagle, and we couldn't find any information uh, referring to those seven arrows. So this is, you know, where we where we American reach history. out. Exactly. We reach out and say, hey, if anybody knows anything, let us know. We, we love to learn, and um, it's one of those things there that we just, you know, we this one was a mystery to us, so All right. anyway, yeah. All right, on. let me see. I'm going to read a couple more questions here. Hey, Darla, you were, we, we, somebody was asking about the, uh, the, the autograph yes. on, the, uh, on the plane. Normally, it comes with paperwork. This does not have any, but um, it is a Danbury Mint. But it's, so the reputation of Danbury yes. Mint makes this seem yes. like it should be very authentic. But we don't have the paperwork. Okay, unfortunately not. And, no. you know, all these pieces that uh, were in Brian's collection, so we know a lot about the, uh, the sports pieces. Uh, because he literally got the, uh, there's one degree of separation there. We, he These literally got the These are a lot from golf tournaments that he went. The Giants would play in a, in a certain um, charity auction, and he, they attended a lot of these and got these. Okay. Very cool. Thank you. We mm -hmm. appreciate that. Uh, any more questions out there, guys, that we want to, okay, what's the, uh, what's the process of bidding? All right. I mean, I can run you quickly through that. Uh, it's a pretty easy one. You can shop the site. Uh, at will, um, but as you get to the point where you're going to want to make a bid or make a purchase, uh, you need to sign up. It'll go. It's a pretty quick process uh, in, a, in a small amount of information. Uh, it is. It does run like an auction. Uh, most of the auctions run for five days. Some run for seven days. But you'll always see uh, very clearly marked how many days are left and where it's at in the process. Um, there's, a, there's a, you know, to place a bid, it's just like any other shopping site, hit the button, uh, and then it'll run you through a couple things. It'll ask you about shipping versus pickup, and then it'll talk to you a little bit about uh, just whether, how you want to bid. You can put in one bid and then walk away and see if it hap happens to hold. You're also able to put in a max bid. That way, if you're away from your computer and something happens, it'll automatically help bid to, bid to whatever you set as your maximum. Uh, and different people have different styles on how they bid. They bid early, they bid late. Uh, it is an auction. It's a lot of fun because of that uh, is how you, how you start to kind of how you start to kind of uh, uh, navigate it and how you, you start to figure it out. So that becomes a lot of fun. Uh, once that happens, you know, you're going to keep watching the bidding action and, and hopefully you come up at the end and, and as a winner. Uh, and then we ship it out to you. It's all full service. And, and the beauty of this, too, on, on everything but the house is that we, everything is, is handled and dealt with by us. You're not dealing with any third parties or any uh, clandestine meetups. We take it and we process it just like any other e-commerce business uh, and send it out direct to you or you come into our warehouse and, and pick it up. Uh, and so where are we located was another part of that. Thank you, Meredith. Um, we, are, we have a warehouse in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, and we have a warehouse in Blue Ash, or, which is in Blue Ash, sorry. And then we have a warehouse in, uh, in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, and then we ship, you know, anywhere, wherever you want. We'll ship it to you. Uh, and that, that happens a number of ways. And if there's any ever questions on that, you just hit our uh, customer service line and they'll help kind of walk you through any of that. All right. Anything else uh, going on on the, uh, on the chat that we want to worry about? 
Okay, all right, thanks guys. Uh, a very unique collection uh, with lots of collectibles that definitely brought uh, back some memories for me. I know I used to spend hours uh, organizing and sorting and playing with my, uh, my baseball cards and my basketball cards. So uh, we will be back live on Sunday the 27th to provide an update on the Bartok family estate and help guide you through the ending action. Just as a reminder that uh, this Sunday night is another chance for you to be bidding uh, to for your bidding to be featured on our upcoming TV series, the Bartok Family Estate will be one of the episodes coming up. So uh, when you get there Sunday, you'll turn on the video capture feature on live.ebth.com, uh, and then be sure to set your camera up in a good light and good angle and get it all set up so you uh, stand out for the producers. Uh, and then we'll have uh, several auctions closing on Sunday, so we'll be bouncing around a little bit. There's a really great. Um, master painter uh, portrait uh, sale that's going on right now that'll be closing Sunday. There's also uh, a mod sale that we have going live. Those are very popular. Uh, that will also be closing on Sunday as well, uh, or it'll be going live Sunday as well, so we'll be able to talk about it on Sunday. Uh, and until then, you know, we'll see you guys on Sunday night and keep living the uncommon life. Uh, happy bidding. Thank you.